Hi, I'm Art Futterman and these are the tools we use for pollinating. This is actually the dethorning knife, but handy for getting the thorns out of the way before you start your pollinating. This is the little knife we use to, to actually do the pollinating. It's got a, a curve to it so that when you reach into the bunch to cut and do your thinning, and you can do a draw stroke and it really makes that little curve makes it a lot easier for um, pulling that out. This is a nice one because it's got a lanyard and a little holster but you can use just a regular carpet or linoleum knife that you can find at the hardware store. This is a little rubber ball that has pollen in it and you'll see it makes a little shot of pollen. We use that to dust the pollen on the, on the bunches. We use strings. This is a little cotton string about 18 inches long. We start with a little tail knot that will be later you'll see that in the video how we use that. And these are the bags that we use to uh, keep the pollen around the bunches. Start by cutting the casing back. Just pull that out. And you don't have to go real far, but go as far as you can conveniently and easily. Then, this has a fruit stalk, but it's still far down inside there. So you try to find where the strands are. You can just barely see the beginning of it right here. Can you get a tight shot on that? Yeah. Can you see that beginning to be the center stalk right there? Mm -hmm. This one's a little hard to get to because it's not real far out yet. But we'll go ahead and try to get that. There we go. You can see it now. See that there's a stalk. So you're trying to cut the center, the center strands. You can see that it's all one piece there still. And you're trying to get about 40% of the total amount of flowers. Um, on very long stem varieties like Deglet, they'll cut the tips off, but I don't really like that. I do it on Deglet, but most other varieties I don't do that. Um, some varieties get a lot of strands, and where you have really husky ones like Barhi, I'll reduce this down to just 40 strand count. So I'll just, you know, like have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I've got about 30 to 35 strands here, so it's not going to be too big a bunch. Next thing, I take a little pollen, a knife put away here. That's all you need, just a little, one little puff. Next thing, we take a string. It has one knot already in the tail end. We'll see what that's for in a minute. About midway down the flowers. I uh, slip knot over, under, around, and through, as the old expression goes. Slip knot, close the knot, and then slide that in. That's just about the right length. You want it so that it swells, it doesn't slip off the top or crowd out the bottom. The purpose of the little knot here is so that as this swells, it doesn't completely lose the string. I'll explain the reason for that string. Um, as the next one grows too, these uh, strands will spread out like this. And they'll get all tangled up with each other. And then as the wind blows, it scratches the fruit, damages the fruit, knocks them off. And it can um, make it really hard to get this to grow out. So by having it tied like this, it sort of threads itself out as it comes out and gets ready to hang like this. And also the, the strands tend to want to spread out like this and then when it gets out like this the strands have to come back down like this but by at this point the strands start to be really stiff and you can break off strands and have the whole strands die by not being out like this. So this way it's ready to hang 
down as it gets to this part about tie down time. So the string does a lot of good, you know, it really serves a lot of good purposes. Then we cover it with a bag. This is to hold the pollen in. It's, it helps on the young flowers, but on, especially on one like this, if we were to cut this one today, which we could, um, it, the flowers probably are really not receptive yet. This will keep the pollen in place. It also tends to sort of temper the temperature in there and keep it more at the right um, temperature for the flowers to be receptive. So we slide that down there. Grab one of the thorns. There's always thorns. There's never a lack of thorns. Hold that down a little bit. Make sure you don't poke your fingers. Just slide that through. And that'll keep the bag from blowing away. So now you have a flower ready to go. And that's how we pollinate a day palm.